As a creator that uses Final Cut Pro as my editing platform for my videos on YouTube, as well as my Instagram Reels, I've decided to really stick with the Apple ecosystem for my tech everyday carry. And that includes my iPhone 14 Pro Max, which is an upgrade from the iPhone 13 Pro that I had last year. I'm also using the AirPods Pro. This is the first generation. This isn't one of the newest ones that landed this year, so I didn't upgrade those. And then I am using the Apple Watch Ultra, which is an upgrade from my Apple Watch SE. And right after my Apple Watch SE to this Ultra, I used the 7 for about a month. And honestly, I really like the rugged design of the Ultra, so I decided to upgrade. But my main component of all my tech everyday essentials is my iPhone, which I actually have here. Like I said, it's my everyday essential. I use it for everything. I'm actually using it to look at my notes. I'm using Notion to take all of my notes for my YouTube scripts, for my reels. And I keep it here with me because I have all of the notes. Like I said, I reference back to what I want to say, little key points that I want to hit on whenever I'm making one of these videos. And the iPhone really is the most essential one because not only do I use it for my notes, but I also use it to look at all of my photos, anything that I'm editing, anything that I'm posting, I keep it on my iPhone and I can really post on the go. I also use the preview app that I actually just got probably about a week ago. I'm going to be using that for all of 2023 to really plan and auto post everything for Instagram. Over the past year, I honestly found it really difficult to keep up with Instagram and whenever I'm going to be posting any reel that I planned out, wrote out the caption, it really found it difficult to go back into the app and post it. So now I'm going to be using preview to auto post all of that. That way I can set it up. And whenever I have everything ready to go, I can just auto publish whenever I set it or schedule it to publish on Instagram. Now, another reason why the iPhone is the most essential one is because I really use it to communicate with everything. I have my work Slack so I can communicate with everyone at work. I obviously have iMessage so I can communicate with everyone in my personal circle. And then I also have the YouTube studio app to respond to any comments, respond to anything that you guys say, anything on there. And then I also have my Instagram as well for all of the messages, as well as Messenger that kind of combines everything into one to really respond to anyone that I don't have on iMessage, but that's a friend, anyone that I have on Facebook, as well as anyone on Instagram that's responding to any of my posts. And then the last thing is using it as content consumption. Now I do use the iPad whenever I'm at home, but whenever I'm out in mobile, I like having the iPhone 14 Pro or really any, any iPhone. This year I actually upgraded to the Pro Max because of the larger screen. I was using my 13 Pro for a lot of content consumption on YouTube and Instagram, all of the reels. And honestly, I wanted something that was a little bit larger and also a little bit brighter. And when I did my first review of the 14 Pro, I did like the brighter screen. So I decided to really upgrade as well as go with the Pro Max this year so I can have a larger screen to watch all of the videos as well as anything on Instagram. Now, everything that I just mentioned, really, you can use it with any phone. It can be an Android phone or an older iPhone. It works just fine. You can use all of those features on the Instagram, YouTube studio, really answering any messages. But really, I've used the iPhone because of AirDrop. That's really nice whenever I have something on my MacBook. I edited a reel and I can just seamlessly just AirDrop it over and it takes just a couple of seconds. And anytime I'm doing a long form video, anything that's five minutes, even though it's like a gigabyte or two on the MacBook, it really transfers it over in less than a minute. And I think that's really great as well as whenever I'm out and about. I'm using my MacBook at a coffee shop or something. I can just airdrop any files over rather than having to remember to take an extra cable wherever I go. Now, out of the three things, the iPhone being the most important, the second one that I place with the highest priority is actually my AirPods Pro. I have them here in a case that I got off of Amazon, but they're the AirPods Pro first generation. I can't remember when they came out. But these are honestly really great. They have noise cancellation. They work well for calls. The microphones are okay for any of the calls and also for watching content whenever you're at a coffee shop and you're trying to work, whether you want to listen to music or watch something with that active noise cancellation, you can really tune in to whatever you're watching on your iPhone and not have to worry about any of the background noise. Now I have two main uses that I use for these AirPods. Number one is listening to content whenever I am working out. If I am on my treadmill, I go ahead and throw these on. I watch YouTube or I listen to a podcast or music and I can run on the treadmill just fine or go out for a run. 
Unfortunately, what I didn't like about these AirPods is that they don't have any wingtips. And anytime you buy a third party wingtip because they're made to go into this case, you have to remember to always take off the wingtips just so you can put them away and then have to remember to place them back on whenever you're going to work out. And that was honestly a little bit too tedious for me, so I didn't really use them. But without the wingtips, they fall out of my ears whenever I'm running on the treadmill or running outside. So it's really difficult to work out with them, but I still prefer them over my Sony's, which I believe are back there. I prefer these over the Sony's just because those are a bit larger. They kind of heat up my ears, they heat up my head, and it really, I, I don't like it whenever I'm working out, especially to kind of ruin some headphones if I get sweat in them. None of these are really sweat resistant, what you would call. Um, so I definitely don't want to mess up any headphones, but if I do happen to mess them up, I prefer that they be these than the Sony ones. And the second main use I have for these headphones is for taking video calls, conference calls, whenever I'm using them for my day job. They work really well, they're portable. Like I said, you can keep them in your pocket. Whenever I'm around work, I can always have them with me. And whenever it's time to jump on a call, because we use Max as well for work, I can just open them up and they seamlessly just pair. They know, hey, you've opened up your AirPods, let's connect them to this MacBook. And I can get from taking them out of my pocket to jumping on the call in less than a minute and they're already paired up. Now, because I have those two main uses for these headphones, that makes it the second most essential out of these three devices, but it's also another thing that I really carry with me anywhere I go. Like I mentioned, I can use it for watching content anytime I have to take a call that I want it to be in private, not having to hold up my phone, I can just use this as well. And the least important essential, but it's still an essential for me, is the Apple Watch Ultra doesn't have to be the ultra. That's part of why it's not really an essential to get this one. It's not like you're just going to up and start running a marathon or you're just going to start a hill climb randomly wherever you are. So it doesn't have to be the ultra. I'm not really that active of a person. So I use it mostly because of the battery life. I really didn't like having to charge my Apple watch every single day. It really started to kind of run out of battery for me on that second day. So instead I went with the Ultra and now I get a clean day and a half. And I say day and a half because I do charge it that second afternoon. And then I can go ahead and use it for another day and a half before I have to charge it again. And the reason it's the least essential for me is because I honestly just kind of use it like a buffed up notification center. Whenever I have my phone in my pocket, whenever I'm out and about, I like using my watch to check all of my notifications rather than having to take my phone out of my pocket. But really, there's not really any like hardcore. I'm not a Apple Watch power user. I just use it for the basic things, notifications, track my sleep, track my workouts and as a normal watch to check the time whenever I need to know the time. But because using it as a notification center is one of the main uses, it is essential that it is an Apple Watch. It doesn't have to be the Ultra, but it does have to be an Apple Watch because unfortunately any other watch that you can get out there, whether it's a Garmin, a Galaxy Watch, a Fitbit, whatever it is, it doesn't work as well with iPhones. iPhone really has locked down a lot of that to their Apple Watch and Apple Watch only. So having an Apple Watch for those notifications honestly works really great. Whenever you get a ring notification, you can see the picture whenever someone sends a photo. You can see the photo as well. You can see previews of any uh, link that someone sends you through iMessage. It's all really, really integrated into the Apple ecosystem and it all really works great. Second reason why it has to be an Apple Watch is the camera feature where you can go into the camera and use it kind of as a remote shutter so that whenever you're out taking a photo, maybe with your girlfriend, wife, boyfriend, whatever, you can set it up and then you can walk away from it and still use your Apple Watch to see exactly what the camera is seeing as well as pressing the shutter button, setting up a timer and taking that photo and have it framed perfectly rather than being the one that sets up the camera, clicks the shutter and timer and then you run and you just hope that it looks good. But anyways, that's my everyday tech essentials, especially the iPhone. I use it for so many things that if I don't take it with me, it honestly kind of limits me to anything I can do. It's a mobile workstation. You can type notes, you can answer comments, watch content. You can really do anything on it, especially for content creation. You can edit the photos, edit some quick videos, and then post them straight from the iPhone. If I wasn't using Final Cut Pro and a MacBook, I honestly would go for an Android. Even now, even using Final Cut Pro, I prefer Android just because of the customizability and how you can change the home screen all the time. You still can do it on the iPhone and I will have a video coming up on that. So make sure you subscribe if you wanna know how to do it. It's just a little bit more difficult 
Android works really well with kind of the customization part of it, but AirDrop and iMessage is works really great. And because like I said, I'm using Mac, this is the way I'm going to be set at least for 2023. Let me know down in the comments. What do you think? Are you someone that's in the Apple ecosystem or have you been able to break out or were you just never in and you're using Android? Let me know what your best favorite feature is from your phone down in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe to not miss any of my future uploads and I will catch you on the next one.